Hey guys, in today's video we're going to be talking about the high powered wall charger versus the NEMA 1450 receptacle, so if you're interested, stay tuned. So I see this question asked all the time online, so I thought I'd tackle it. And basically I'm going to do this video based on if you have, just have one Tesla, like a Model 3, but this will also work for a Model S as well, for the most part. So if you have two Teslas, say Model S, or Model 3, or two Model 3s or whatever, then right off the bat, definitely you want to get a wall charger. But that's not the topic of this video. The topic of this video is if you have one, and if you want to use the high power wall, ch wall charger, or the 1450 uh, NEMA adapt adapter, the receptacle. So in my mind, I think there's a clear winner, and the clear winner would be the NEMA 1450 receptacle, and that's because basically the high power wall charger is gonna cost you $500 on top of what you'd already need to do. So you can either pay $500, or basically you can pay $3,500, $35 for an adapter. So what I mean by paying $35 for an adapter is, at least from when I got the car last December, uh, the 1450 adapter for your mobile charger actually came with the car, but as of April 2019, they stopped doing that. So the 1450 adapter now costs $35. So that's basically all you'd have to spend rather than spending an extra $500 on the actual wall charger. So second reason is speed. So the mobile charger charges at 32 amps max. And so basically what that's going to give you is that's going to give you 30 miles an hour. So if you have a, a mid-range or an SR Plus, that's the max you can go anyways. So the mobile charger works fine. But say if you have a long range or P3D, those models are equipped to go 48 amps. And so you're going to be limited to 32 amps, which is going to be uh, 30 miles an hour. Whereas if you had 48, so if you had a wall charger, you could go 44 miles an hour. But I don't feel that's really relevant when basically if you're charging at home, you're going to be charging at overnight anyways. And so if you were to charge the entire battery on just your mobile connector at 32 amps, you can get from 0% all the way to 100, so 310 miles in about 10 and a half hours. So you could do that overnight anyways. So just having the high power wall charger doesn't really make sense because you're paying extra money for more speed that you don't need because you can charge over the, f the full amount of the battery overnight. So I don't really think it makes sense to have a wall charger when the mobile connector will get you to the same place just a little bit slower. But again, it's overnight, so you're sleeping anyways, and it doesn't matter. Another advantage of getting a NEMA 1450 is that it's just a receptacle, which means that you can put your Tesla mobile charger or a Tesla mobile adapter in there. But if you say have a Nissan Leaf or another EV that also uses a 1450, which I think most of them do, you can also use it for those cars instead. Whereas if you if you have a high power wall charger, you can only use it for a Tesla, so you lose that versatility as well. So I suppose one of the advantages of having the high power wall charger is if you're in a real pinch like during the middle of the day and you needed that 14 extra miles, so 30 miles an hour to the 44 miles an hour for the wall charger, if you needed that 14 miles an hour really bad and you were charging for like say maybe two hours or three hours during the middle of the day, then I guess it would be worth it to have the wall charger. But I think those types of instances are few and far between, so it doesn't really make sense to have that. And if you were in that much of a pinch, you might as well just go to a supercharging station if you have one that's close, because then you could get a ton of energy. You wouldn't have to be like, you know, nickel and diming your your uh, wall charger for energy. You'd get it all real quick, and you'd just probably pay a little bit, just a few cents more, because supercharging is probably going to be more expensive than what you pay for at home. And the only one real reason I can think of that you would want a high power wall charger over the mobile adapter is say you have a really cool looking garage. So maybe you have a Tesla themed garage or maybe the walls are painted and it's really nice inside and you want to put up that wall charger for cool factor, then that's where I could see it being worth it to get the wall charger just because it looks cool. Um, because obviously the mobile adapter is just this little plug and it's kind of ugly looking and it hangs around. So that's the only reason I could really think of that you would want a high power wall charger over the mobile adapter, but you're gonna pay for it. For me though, I just have a normal looking garage. It's not anything fancy. So I just have my 1450 receptacle just hanging out you know, on the wall and it's my mobile charger is just plugged in and that's basically it. One other thing I've heard of too, is that a lot of people will say, oh, well I need to bring my mobile charger with me because I charge when I'm on the road or you know, out somewhere. So for me personally, 
I have never had an issue where I needed to actually have my 1450 plug with me. I guess maybe in some other places of the country, maybe you could do that. But for me around here, if I'm out, I just supercharge, either supercharge or basically I use like charge point or one of those types of public uh, stations where basically you're going to use your adapter, your uh, J1772 adapter, use that, plug it in, and you can get charged that way. So <clears throat> for those people that say that, oh, I use my, you know, I, I need to bring my 1450 with me then just buy another one. That's, that's all there is to it. Uh, you can buy, so that would be a lot cheaper to buy the another mobile connector with the 1450 adapter. That's around $300 if you want to do that, which is still cheaper than paying the $500 extra for the wall charger. So I guess I'm gonna, I wanna just reiterate that when I say $500 for the wall charger extra, basically that's buying the unit, but then when you buy the unit, then you're also going to need an electrician to actually install it, you know, in your in your wall in your home. And so basically, you're going to have to do all the circuit breaker stuff and all that. So that's going to cost a certain amount, which would be in my case it was five hundred dollars to get the fourteen fifty receptacle put in. That cost me five hundred dollars. So that was basically all I paid five hundred dollars, and I'm good to go, ready to charge at level two. Now, if you have if you were to have the high power wall charger, you would pay five hundred dollars for the electrician to do his stuff. And then obviously another another five hundred dollars for the wall charger on top of that. So it's like paying five hundred for a plug or a thousand for basically a wall charger that's set up, you know mounted to your wall. So that's where that extra five hundred comes from. I just want to reiterate that. So that's basically what I think on the high power wall charger versus the fourteen the NEMA fourteen fifty uh, receptacle. Obviously, think for me it's fourteen fifty is way better. So which method were you guys going to use? to have in your garage if you're going to get a Tesla. Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.